Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I'm recording this video on Saturday, January 28th, 2023. The reason I'm telling you the date is because Autodesk has given me permission to show an unreleased feature that will be coming to Fusion in a future update and will be implemented for all users. I can't tell you when the, that date will be. I don't think you'll have a terribly long time to wait for that feature. When that feature is released, my hope is that users aren't surprised by the change and that you know how this feature is going to work when it is implemented for you. What I thought I would do is run through some parts showing you the current state of how we select geometry, which is what this video is about, some of the limitations of the current method of selecting geometry, and then I will turn the new geometry selections method on and run through the same parts and show you some of the benefits uh, and changes that are going to be made uh, to a future version of Fusion. So let's jump into this part. And the first task that I would like to do with this part is do a 2D adaptive roughing operation all the way around the perimeter of the part. I'm gonna select 2D adaptive clearing. I'll go and select a tool. And inside of this document is a 3 8 inch end mill. And I'm gonna choose the aluminum roughing uh, tool path. I'll choose select. And now I'm gonna go and select some geometry. To get this pocket that I want, this profile, I'm gonna click on the geometry one time, and then I'm gonna go over the blue pro profile and click on it a second time. That's not exactly obvious for a new user about how you double click on geometry and get different options based on what you select. So that is the current state. What I wanna do is pick a new path, and what you'll see is I can get out to the very outermost parts of this arc because there's no geometry for the geometry engine to chain around. So when I hit the green plus to select the option and I look at this from the top, what you'd see is if I were to select this, I would cut part of my part off with the way the geometry is selected. So current state, what I have to do is go to design. I need to create a sketch on this face. I'm then going to delete that geometry. And now I could go create, project, include, project. I'll project in the total body and I'll hit OK. I can finish that sketch. And now when I go back to manufacture and do the same 2D adaptive clearing, selecting the same tool and the same roughing preset, I can now go to my geometry window and select that sketch and get the geometry I want. I also, oftentimes when I select sketch geometry, the arrow is on the wrong side. So sometimes the profile would want to cut on the inside instead of the outside cutting my part away completely. So you can see in this scenario, I had to create a sketch, just select the geometry that I wanted to machine. I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna go find that sketch and turn that off. And we'll look at another thing that we have to do inside of Fusion currently. If I would want to just machine this end pocket, I would again do a 2D adaptive clearing. I'll select that tool one more time and the roughing preset. The non-obvious thing that I'm going to do here is hold the Alt or Option key down while I select on the first piece of geometry. Then I'm gonna click that a second time. Now I can choose where I'd like that profile to end. I wanna do an open pocket and I can hit the green plus to select that. And there you can see that I can select an open pocket. So that's the current state of selecting uh, different boundaries inside of Fusion. You can see the limitations. If I jump over to the next part, what I would like to do is do a contouring finishing pass along this edge. And I will select the 2D contour for that. Inside of this document should be a tool that I can use. I'll grab this half inch flat end mill. And now I'm gonna to go to my geometry. Again, I have to know that in order to just get one piece of geometry, I have to hold the Alt or Option key down. And what I can do is I can't select all the different edges at the same time. I'm gonna select these two kitty corner edges. And the reason for that is I would like the tool to start out, because we're climb cutting, the tool's gonna to start out on this side and it's gonna cut across this way. I want to extend that tool so it starts off the part and goes across that entire face. And if I were to select this edge as well, it would start way out here and it would stop early. 
I'm going to do that by turning on tangential extension distances and I'm, I want to do a separate. So in this case, I want to do a start tangential extension of 0.5 and a finish of 0 0.05. I'll hit OK and what you'll see is the toolpath starts farther out right here so it starts off of that wall and completely cleans that wall it does the same thing over here to demonstrate what i meant by you can't select them all at the same time sorry click the wrong area there i'm going to edit this toolpath that i just created and go to the geometry i'm going to hold down my alt or option key and select another line and then i'm going to hit okay and now note that we start way off on space on this end and we don't go very far on the end where I want the toolpath to be extended by. Which means I either have to select each one of these edges individually and do a unique tangential extension distance or select the two edges that make sense as pairs in this particular case. Move on to the next example. Here's a simple part where there's some going to be some engraving that's going to be done. So I'm going to switch over to manufacture. I'll just create a quick setup on this and hit OK. And now what I'd like to do is a 2D trace toolpath. And I want to go and select a tool. I will grab a engraving tool out of my library. And what you'll note with this example is to engrave the letters, I have to go one by one selecting each of the outlines that I want to machine. On this example, it's not too tedious because there's not too many lines, but it's kind of a pain. I can hit OK, and you can see all my geometry is selected, and I get a trace tool path. So now let's run through those same parts with the new geometry selections turned on. I've now enabled geometry selections, and let's run through and see some of the new improvements that come with geometry selections. I'm going to do a 2D adaptive clearing tool path, and I'm going to go and select a tool and I'm gonna select the preset that I wanna use with this. And I'll, I notice that nothing in the tool tab has changed. However, when I go to the geometry tab, you'll see quite a few differences here. And the new things that you should see are the selection window and the different options that we have for selecting geometry. So now we can select chains, face contours, pockets, silhouettes, sketch profiles, and pocket recognition. If you want a better explanation of what these different things do, just hover over that down arrow when it's available to you and you can kind of go through and read what these options do. I'm just gonna show a handful of these options in the video. The first one I wanna talk about is when you choose an open pocket or a closed pocket. So I'll choose the drop down and I'll just choose the chain. And note, instead of having to remember the keyboard shortcuts that you use, you can automatically tell Fusion if you want an open, con open chain or a closed chain. I'm gonna choose an open chain. And now I just simply click on where I want the chain to start and where I want the chain to end and I can hit OK, and that geometry has been recognized. I can do the same thing on the other side, so I can do another chain, and I wanna do another open chain. I click on the edge I wanna start, click on the edge I wanna finish, and I can hit OK. One of the things that I was worried about is I've developed some muscle memory inside of Fusion over the years, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use this new user interface. And so the good news is, is that the methods that you used to use to select geometry still work. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key down and I'm gonna zoom in on this little arc and I'm gonna click on that arc once and then I'm gonna click on that arc a second time. Now I'll go and choose where I want that arc to end and note it's already set everything to open for me and I can hit OK and it's added that option. Now these two I have going to the uh, the tangent but now this one notice this one's going all the way out there so for this chain i'd like that chain to work a little bit differently notice that there's a gear icon next to each one of the selections that you make i'm going to click on this gear and on the drop down instead of saying tangent i'm going to choose closest boundary now when i hit okay you can see that that trimmed that toolpath off so it's going to the nearest boundary outside uh, i actually click on the line there and now i could just go and adjust my heights and say from the stock top to the model bottom, whatever their options I want to use are all the same. And when I hit OK, we get a roughing strategy that does those particular options. One other thing I wanted to show really quick is I could do a 2D contour. 
and I'll use the same tool, but now when I go to the geometry, I don't have to go and select those options a second time. I can simply go to the previous operation that I want to use and reuse those selections. When I click on that pocket selection, notice that it shows me the chain link, showing me that this is linked to a previous uh, geometry choice. And if that previous geometry choice updates, so does the things that are linked to it. So that's a nice little feature that's coming to the software as well. If I were to do another uh, 2D contour, maybe one of the things that I can do in the software is I'll use the same tool on the geometry tab. Now this time, maybe I want to do a cleanup pass around everything. I can hit the drop down and I can say, just give me the silhouette of the part. And we'll note that if we look here, that I get the silhouette outline of the part without having to create a sketch to find that. So that's a really nice option. And you can choose to do all loops, only outer loops, or only inner loops. So you have different options that you can select. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit cancel. So those are some of the new uh, methods for selecting geometry. And don't worry, some of the old methods for selecting geometry still work if you wanna use those same selection methods. Let's jump over to this part. Now, if you remember, I was talking about how I wanted to have different start and end tangential extension distances for all the edges. I could do a 2D contour, select the tool that I wanna to cut with, which is this half inch flat, and now I could go through to my geometry and I could choose my chain. I wanna do an open chain and I wanna click on the edge. And now I could set my tangential extension distance. So I could say 0.5 for the start and 0.05 for the end. And I'll hit okay. I can do another chain. I wanna do another open chain and this time I wanna select that edge. Now I can do my 0.05 for the start and the 0.5 for the end and I could continue selecting all the other edges in here and when I would hit okay, I'd have one toolpath that did the proper tangential extension distances. The other thing to note on the geometry is note that now when you change a tangential extension distance, let me go edit this first one, if I were to set this first distance to be two inches, note that you get a preview of where it's going to extend your tangential extension distance so that if you weren't paying attention and weren't thinking about the climb versus conventional cut, you now get a graphical preview on the screen of what your tangential extension distance is going to do. So that's a nice change there. Let me jump over to this last example. And if you remember when I did this with the old method, I had to select each one of the edges. So this time I'm gonna do a 2D and trace. The tool should still be in the document. I'll grab my engraving tool. And this time on the geometry tab, I'll hit the drop down and say, I would like to choose uh, sketch profiles. I can expand my model and go find my sketches folder. And there's that sketch. And when I hit OK and I hit OK, notice that all the edges that were in that sketch were automatically selected. I think the team has made some really nice improvements to some of the options you can do, like the silhouette or being able to reuse geometry between operations, as well as making things a little bit more discoverable instead of having to know the keyboard shortcuts that you have to use. So now you should know how to use these different features so it's not a surprise to you when they're implemented. I hope you like them. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.